So you're looking to buy a Merlot telehandler. Combined, we have 8,000 hours on these things, and this is what we learned getting there. <laughs> Starting with the operator station, the door has two parts. You can latch the top window open if you want a little airflow, or you can latch the whole thing open. But this one has AC, and what we found is that if you're running stacking straw and whatnot with a bunch of dust around, the AC evaporator is under the seat and gets clogged up. And it's a bit of a pain to clean it out. You have to take the whole seat out, you have to take a bunch of plastic stuff off, and it's kind of hard to get to. So, we try and keep the door shut if the AC's on. The controls on this thing are pretty self-explanatory. Obviously, steering wheel. I think it does tilt. There's a lever under here, and you can tighten it again. Forward and reverse on this one is buttons. The other one has a joystick. So just push the button in the direction you want to go. It's also on the joystick over here. Got direction controls. It has a safety switch on the joystick you have to hold in before the, any of the controls work. So we put a zip tie so you don't have to think about it. But um, Hydraulics, your boom in and out. And these two do the same thing. If you have more functions, this would probably do something different. But this is your auxiliary hydraulics. So in our case, it runs the grabber. Um, you don't have to worry about most of this. There's overload controls. There's a um, load cell on the rear axle. So if you put too much weight on it, it'll fall out and it'll disable your controls. So you have to... You have to have the key, and you can turn the override on, and then you're allowed to put the boom down. But that doesn't always quite work, so on this one we have a switch to bypass that that just goes to the hydraulic unlock valve. Um, at the end of the valve stack, there's a, a valve that enables or disables all your hydraulics, so if, if that's on, then it'll work regardless. This is like a a maximum throttle control which I don't know where you would want that but if you have this switch over it goes to this potentiometer and then you can adjust your maximum throttle AC and fan is over here and half of your lights are here the other half are on your joystick or your turn signals over here um that's about it you got crab steer back here which is a little bit of a pain to get your wheels to line up after using that so we don't really ever use that and your heater controls are there the windows you can open the front window if you want gotta fiddle with that a little bit and you can open the rear window you also have your high and low rabbit turtle right here we almost never use turtle because it's it's really slow. Just yeah. Almost always in rabbit. And you want to be stopped completely in neutral to change this because we think this gets hard on transmissions to shift this if you're moving at all. We got throttle right here, brakes. It's supposed to be the brake pedal at any rate. And then an inching pedal. So it's a little bit like riding the clutch, but it doesn't hurt anything. So if you want to slow down and maintain engine RPMs to put the boom up quickly or something, you can hold this down and increase the throttle. The other one also has a diff lock right there. There's a button in the floor. But this one doesn't have that. Fuel tank is under the cab. You got your fuel fill right here. And your hydraulic oil tank is right there. Fills on top. That's kind of interesting how the boom works. They got like one cylinder going front like you would usually see but then there's another cylinder right here going straight up and down i guess that's something to do with leverage to get better force at certain boom positions but that's just a guess the build quality for the frame is 
really good. I think they got two beefy pieces of plate steel running the length. Just a plate in the back to cap it off. And some gussets and things underneath. If you take this cover off, all your hydraulic lines to the boom are behind there. Your radiator and screens up front, which kind of like to get covered up with straw. But we've never had overheating issues with these, so it doesn't seem to be too much of a problem. Here, they have a clean outdoor, so you can sort of push straw down through there, get this out of the way. These things have, or this one at least, has a 100 horsepower Deutz in it. With this is pre emissions, so there's no exhaust gas recirculation, anything. It's just straight to the muffler, which is really nice. Got your air filter right there. We haven't had any trouble with the engines that I know of. Any trouble we thought we had turned out to be electrical. There's a cover plate under the boom here you can take off to get to the transmission and that type of thing. We have had three transmissions go out between the two, so that's a bit of a weak point. The battery's there. Disconnect here. This one doesn't have a handle on it anymore. The auxiliary hydraulics in these things from factory, at least on these ones, are open center. So when you let go of the little rocker switch in there, it just floats the valve, I guess. So, like if you're trying to grab straw, as soon as you let go of the switch, your tines will start to come out of the bales. You can see how if I let it go, it kind of relaxes the tines. So there is a trick to it though. If you clamp it and then let go of the trigger and keep holding this, it'll lock the tines in their last position. You lose all your other functionality while you're doing that, but if you're driving across the field, it doesn't rob your power. Like if you're holding that, it robs all your power. So it helps a little bit. So this one, they had the dealership put another valve in or somehow get it so it's not like that anymore. So there's valves here that you can shut off so that it doesn't build pressure in the couplers so you can hook it up again. For the Merlot Quick Connect, there's a single pin in the center that there's another hydraulic line coming around here that's just kind of stored here. So you take this off, put it on here, and then you can cause that pin to come up with your auxiliary hydraulics to change attachments. Um, got all kinds of random electrical connections here. I have no idea what it does. We never use it. This is an adapter plate to go to Euro because that's what all the attachments were before the telehandlers. So pull this out and drop it off. The three-stage boom is really nice for stacking straw especially. You don't have to be right up against the stack. You can be back a little bit and see what you're doing. The other telehandler is a two-stage boom. So you have to be right up against the stack to get the top bales on when you're stacking this high. It's a little hard to see what you're doing. Three stages are really nice. You can be back like here somewhere and you can see what you're doing a whole lot better. So you can stack eight high with the other one? Yeah, I think so. Seriously. Just got a tether tooth in the baler.
rest of the footage of loading there. I tried to put the camera in time lapse instead of normal video, and it decided not to record. So that's all the more footage of loading we have. Uh, we got rained out in here, so I guess that's it for today. I guess I should wrap this video up. Um, overall, they're decent telehandlers. From talking to people, I don't know that they're that much worse or better or anything than any of the other ones. They all have their pros and cons. But they've served their purpose thus far, and I don't see why they wouldn't keep working for quite some time yet. But if you want to buy a Merlot, I guess that's what we've learned. So, there you go.